You know, they do complain about not being able to find a girlfriend because they say, oh, I'm not tall enough, so no girl wants me. I don't make enough money, so no girl wants me. I'm not handsome. I don't look like BTS, so no girl wants me. Yeah, young men are sick of seeing women being police officers saying they're not qualified to protect you and seeing them in the office, in the workplace, saying that they were just given those jobs because they're women. Ooh. Somebody, oh, he God. needs some milk. What? Idol, this is CC Lesson 3. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to build a bit on the last thing that we talked about. We talked about the new president in South Korea, Yoon Suk Yeol, and how basically he won and it's not gonna be a good thing for women and the whole fight for gender equality. And there were a few people in the comments saying that they hoped I talked a bit more about gender gap issues in Korea. And few small announcements. A lot of people ask about my ring light and um, you can see when I get all close there's hearts in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I actually asked to join their affiliate program so I did. And if you guys are curious and getting, they have like cats, like it's like a cat shape. There's stars, there's the heart of course. It's kawaii lighting. There's a link in the description box below. It gives you guys a discount. It also supports me so check that out if you guys are interested in having hearts in your eyes. Also, I want to say we hit 80,000 subscribers last week. So yeah, <laughs> thank you guys so much for that. For those who are new here, if you're interested in content about Korea, being a foreigner in Korea, social dynamics of all that, I also do a lot of ranting videos just about whatever is socially relevant at the time. Or if you just want to see like vlogs in my life, you know, I travel quite a bit. I'll be back in Korea and Japan later this year. I'm in London right now. If you just want to see vlogs of my travels and request videos, then you should then you should then you should consider subscribing. It's free for you, but it literally means the world to me. Also for the channel members, I have not given you guys an exclusive vlog since Christmas and I am so sorry. But me and London Bay just took a day trip date last weekend and we went to the Seven Sisters, we were at the beach, and I'm gonna, I vlogged it all. So that's gonna be coming for you guys later this week. Also for the channel members, um, if you get to the end of the video and you don't see your name like posted, please let me know because I've been getting a few people saying, hey, I don't see my name at the end. I pretty much check the member list and I like copy it and type it out. And sometimes it doesn't update properly so I might miss a name or two. If that's you, then let me know and I will just add it and we'll be all good. All right, let's get into this video. So full disclaimer, I am well aware that gender inequality is a worldwide pandemic. Since the dawn of time, since the book of Adam and Eve, the Bible days, before that, women have already always been portrayed as guilty, it's our fault, we're the sinners, our bodies are sinful, we can't think for ourselves, we tempt men to do bad things, like it's always been our fault. The fight for equality is a never-ending war. I'm not trying to say this is just Korea's problem. I know there are places in the world where women still aren't allowed to get an education. Women can't drive. In red states in America, for example, they're rolling back female uh, reproductive rights. So I know this is not just Korea, but like I said, relevancy. We were just talking about how President-elect Yoon suk yeol basically ran his whole campaign on misogyny and anti-feminism, and that's how he won. The reason I want to talk about Korea is because it is literally my second home. I spent a lot of time there. You know, I grew up in America, born and raised, but I spent over two years of my life in Korea, living there, working there, exploring, and just growing. So Korea still has a very special place in my heart, and I do like to talk about it a lot. Like, it's really sad for me to see Korea backsliding in this regard. America too, I'm not saying it's just Korea. Given that, you know, there are already issues that women have to deal with, like spy cams is all but an epidemic in Korea. Like, let's be real. It's in bathrooms, it's in hotels. It's hard to feel safe and protected as a woman in Korea. It's so strange to me to see young men hate women so much. So much so that I'm, let me know in the comments if this is not just Korea, but I do know in Korea that they have anti-Me Too rallies and anti-feminist movements. There's this one guy who likes to dress up as the Joker and go and interrupt pro-feminism and pro-gender equality rallies and troll them with a mega horn. I cannot make this up. So first I want to rant about feminism in general. I'll, I'll put chapters in this video if you'd want to skip this part and then go towards the end, which is just primarily about what concerns me about Korea specifically in the coming five years with their new president. But if you're also 
a woman or a person who is just an ally. Like if you're male and you get that life is pretty unfair for women, then um, this part may be for you as well. I just wanted to rant and talk about this. Join me in the comments and let's go. So feminism. <laughs> One thing that really irks me is every social idea, every political movement, every idea has, it's a spectrum. Like there's, you know, the, the normals, there's there's extremes on either end, and it's, it's annoying and unfair. And those extremists tend to sum up the whole idea. Like they get lumped and grouped all together as this radical extreme, unreasonable movement. So for example, with feminism, yes, you do have the, I hate men, um, women are better and more superior than men, type of feminist, but that is not at all what feminism is about. The vast majority of feminists just want equality. They want equal pay. They want to be respected in the workplace. They want to be told that we're not just here to give birth. That's, that's it. Like, that's not so much to ask. Like, we can all understand that men and women are biologically, mentally, socially, whatever, different. That does not mean men are better than women and that does not mean that women are better than men. It means we're different and it's literally that simple. But you know, people like to have rank. They like to believe that they outrank and they're superior to somebody. So since the dawn of time, that's been men's role. Men have been on this planet and told that they're the breadwinners of the family, they're in charge, they make the decisions because they're stronger. Er. <laughs> and these days you see more women wanting to work, wanting to provide for ourselves, and wanting equality and protection and to not face harassment and essay everywhere we go. Again, not so much to ask. Unfortunately, for example, like the overwhelming majority of Muslim people are very peaceful, very kind, very respectful, normal, hardworking people. But because there are extremists on either end, they all get lumped together by those T words. I can't say that on YouTube. And it's not fair. Most Muslim people are very sweet and pleasant and lovely, but because a few of them like to attack people, then they all, it's like, you're gonna attack me because I saw like two of you do it. And that's what's happening with feminism. Like there are the, the bra burners. Bras are kind of stupid though. <laughs> Man hating women are superior to men types of feminists, but that is not what the whole movement is about. And that's how it all gets lumped together and it's unfair. And that's where the hatred I believe comes from. Or just men being defensive about losing their upper footing in society. Or like Black Lives Matter, for example. Most people who protest for Black Lives Matter and acknowledge the organization knows that it's just about proving that Black Lives Matter as well. But then you do have the people saying, oh, you're trying to say that Black, what about white lives, huh? Huh? And people like to twist the narrative to fit their argument and give them something to be defensive about, you know what I mean? One of the things that a lot of feminists, or one of the things you see from feminists and people who want gender equality is dealing with how entitled men feel to women. Like, wh where does that audacity come from? When you're used to being the one in charge, you're used to being the one who has all the power and all the say and all the dominance and they have to obey you, suddenly when you're seeing that's not as acceptable and Worldwide, we are making strides in the right direction, but it's still annoyingly slow. It's, it's like I imagine when a king is, um, you know, getting old, losing his power, his sons are getting old enough to take over and all that stuff. You just, you kind of lose it because you realize you're losing your power, you're losing your dominance. And maybe that's where it comes from, because I'm so sick of seeing story after story, hearing account after account of women who tell a man no thanks, and they get beat up, harassed, stalked, followed, or shit talked about them because of it. Like we all, uh, I don't know, you guys know what incels are, right? Um, they're disgusting and vile. <laughs> and the fact that they all have this mindset that women belong to them and they, all women are trash because they don't want them and we're, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to download. And when you're online with other like-minded people and it's like a constant feedback loop, you feel more justified and those extreme, frankly, horrible ways of thinking, you know? Like one of the things that um, I'm gonna get into a bit later in this video about what Korean men in particular seem to be complaining about is because they feel like the government is giving women too much. They don't like to see them in the workplace and it's, it's a lot, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, I've talked about this before and I just hate how if a woman faces essay, 
it's YouTube, I gotta abbreviate everything. And then men are like, oh, but why did she dress that way? Uh, she should have left the house looking like that if she didn't want this. She was alone, so she should have knew this was coming. This is her fault for not doing this. Instead of saying it's his fault for doing it. And again, I'm not saying this is only an issue women deal with. I know men deal with it too. For example, you have a lot of toxic straight men who have this irrational fear of gay men because they don't want, they're gonna look at me, they're gonna want me, they're gonna flirt with me and, and try to touch me. I was like, oh, so you are aware of that concept of unwanted advances. If you're the one that's on the receiving end, but not a woman. It's like, well, why were you wearing that, sir? Why were those skinny jeans so tight? Maybe pull your pants up and cover your butt. Well, you was wearing that muscle shirt, so he was looking at you. Well, you had them big biceps out, that's what you get. Hmm. It's like they understand that concept then, but when women complain about it on the daily, they're like, it's not all men, not all of us do that. It's like, well, a lot of you do. So there's a lot that women have to deal with, and no matter what women have to deal with, somehow society tricks women into thinking it's our fault. So now to Korea specifically. I think most people are aware that in South Korea there's mandatory military service. It keeps changing, like it's actually getting shorter and shorter because back in the day it used to be like three years that every man had to do or like two and a half years. Now it's what, like 21 to 24 months or something like that. And it might be like 18 soon. It's getting shorter. Anywho, um, a lot of men in Korea who are upset, young men, and I think that's another reason why when you look at this chart, for example, more younger men feel like women and feminism is stupid and stuff because they have to go through this military stuff and they feel it's unfair that only they have to do it. Initially, it was more so because, oh, women have like child rearing responsibilities, women have babies, all that stuff, so they can't be bothered with this military service, so we'll have just the men do it. And because there's been a declining birth rate in Korea and in many countries actually, men are getting fed up like hey they're not even having kids anymore like no one's getting pregnant so like why can they be exempt from the military service it's not fair and let me be clear i'm actually one of the people that i do think that if men should have to do it women should have to do it too but here's my thing if you can acknowledge unfairness between genders in some cases why can't you acknowledge them in all cases i mean I for the most part, the one disadvantage to being a man in Korea is you have to do military service. Like you have to interrupt your life and your work life, your social life for about two years. That's like the one disadvantage to being a man. Why am I moving my neck this much? I'll say that women should serve in the military as well when women get more equality. When women can stop losing these battles for equality. When we stop seeing anti-Me Too movements in Korea, that's when women should be allowed to serve or forced to serve in the military as well. And here's my thing, I've talked with a lot of Korean guys who has done their military service and it's hell. That's a whole nother video. Like the pay is ridiculous. You don't really get to eat good food. You're isolated, there's bullying. That's a whole lot, that's another video. But it seems like there's this concept of if I didn't have to suffer, then so do you. Like uh, before, you know, it used to be your duty and your op, why did I just do Attack on Titan? <laughs> I literally just did this. Okay. It was seen more as like your duty and your honor to protect your country. And honestly, I don't see it as very necessary. I'm not Korean, but here's my take anyway. South Korea has a lot of political, military, social allies, like a lot more so than they did when North and South Korea first split and went to war. So if anything were to pop off with North Korea, I really don't see that being an issue. I feel like these days it's more so like, oh, I had to suffer the military service so you should do it too whenever people are talking about making it not necessary anymore a lot of men are like hey i did it you should have to do it too but my thing is again if you're gonna have women do this then it needs to be you, things just need to be more equal in general because sa does not stop in the military can you imagine how bad it would be for women in the military in korea there already are like women who do choose to volunteer and serve it's a small number but they still do last year i do remember reading headlines about women who ended things because they were being harassed in the military and no one was listening to them. So yeah, that's one of the complaints that men have in South Korea. Another one that they have is they feel like under President Moon's uh, leadership for the past five years, women have been given too much. Women are given protections and family services and that's one of the things President-elect Yoon said he's gonna get rid of. Is it Yoon? Said he's gonna get rid of and that's one of the things that helped him win. Yeah, young men are sick of seeing women being police officers saying they're not qualified to protect you and seeing them in the office, in the workplace, saying that they were just given those jobs because they're women. Oh, somebody, oh, he God. needs some milk. What? My opinion is that a lot of 
South Koreans only know the extreme feminists who hate men and think that women are better than men. And they ignore the everyday issues that women complain about, you know what I mean? You know, they do complain about not being able to find a girlfriend because they say, oh, I'm not tall enough, so no girl wants me. I don't make enough money, so no girl wants me. I'm not handsome. I don't look like BTS, so no girl wants me. And that leads them to like leap toward and, and like lean toward the anti-feminist side. They're like, yeah, they do suck, man. Women suck. They don't give me the time of day. How dare they? The audacity. I'm a man. They should pay me attention and entertain me and love me back. Again, I know that gender issues is a worldwide tragedy, but I just, I never heard of anti Me Too movements or anti feminist movements until Korea. And that was really devastating to hear and to see that this is how people feel, young men in particular, because as you get older, men in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, think that women are equal to men and want to support that. But the young men who were the swing vote in their 20s, to giving President-elect Yoon, I didn't want to say his name, <laughs> giving President-elect Yoon the win. Women, just please be careful. Like, you do gotta be careful about spy cams, men who just don't accept no for an answer. They see you dressed a certain way and feel entitled to you and your body, and it's so irritating. They see you as nothing more of a, a trophy and someone to bring their children into the world, and it's really, really frustrating that it's 2022 and so many people still have this mindset. That's just my little rant. There's a lot to say and I don't want this video to be forever so we'll do it again. Let's do it again sometime. Thanks for watching if you did. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Annyeong!